Okay, everybody, what we want to do right now is I want to connect to my APIC. Now, I'm VPN into my lab. That's going to be essential. Without being VPN, I'm not going to be able to connect to anything. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to HTTPS 10.1.255.254, and it should afford me access to the SIMC of the server hosting the APIC. then basically all I need to be able to do is log in. Now I have a previous session open so it's going to have to refresh. I was just checking everything out before we go through the demo. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in using an undisclosed password because I don't like students being able to get into the actual SIMC. Uh, occasionally even I forget apparently. And then what's going to happen is, is it's going to present me with the SIMC control panel for the C-Series server. And then what I'll find is, is in the top right side, I will find an option here that says launch KVM. So what I want to do is I want to keyboard, video, and mouse into this APIC. Now I'm going to go ahead and choose the HTML-based KVM because I'm a Mac user and that's far easier for me. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to be presented with this KVM server certificate issue and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just say go ahead and connect because it is HTTPS that we did the configuration. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to be presented with a screen and I just factory defaulted the entire system. So I erase the configuration on all leaves, all switches, all spines, excuse me, and I also erase the configuration on the APIC. And what you'll see here is, is I'm now in the configuration wizard for the APIC. Now for the most part I'm going to take defaults. So looking at this what we see is I have the name. What do I want to call it? Well I'm going to call it ACI Fabric 1. So that's going to be the fabric that I'm going to configure. And remember we're only going to make one fabric. And I'll use the default ID of one and it's going to say how many active controllers do I have? One to nine. Well, I've only ever seen three and five, and you can see the default is at three. I only have one, so I'm just going to type one in. Later on, we could add more. It's not a problem. I'm entering a pod ID. The pod ID, I can have up to nine pods in this system, and it's going to be some grouping of leaves and spines. And what I'm going to do, however, is I'm going to just go ahead and create one like we said. Is this a standby controller? No. In other words, if I bring up my other APIX and I've created this guy already, they, the other devices would be standby. So in this instance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say no. And then I'm going to say the controller ID is going to be controller ID 1. Name of that controller is going to be APIC 1. And I said I would take the TEP address range. These are the addresses that are going to be issued to my switches via the APIC as I go through my fabric discovery and actually take the next step. So I'll go ahead and hit enter here. And then I said I would use VLAN 4 because I don't use that inside my infrastructure and it's easier to remember than some of the larger ones. And I'm going to go ahead and take the generic IP outside address range and that's going to be that multicast range. I know it's relatively large and I'm going to take that and then all I'll do is say no I don't want to use an IPv6 address. I do want to use an IPv4 address of 10.1.255.2 and the gateway in my lab is a 10.1.0.1 and then ultimately it's going to ask me do I want to specify speed in duplex if you've set it in the infrastructure you need to set it here I have not I use everything in auto so that's all I'm going to do is I'm going to say accept auto and do I want to enable strong passwords in production yes in a lab no and then what I'll do is I'll use nxos12345 and nxos12345 that's capital NX, lowercase OS, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we'll use that for every password that we can uh, in um, the VMware. When we get into VMM domains and stuff like that, we'll have to use uh, a different password because it's not complex enough. So in this scenario, it's going to give me a summarization of everything that I've entered. Do I want to take this or do I want to edit it? No, I don't want to edit it, so I'm just going to take the default. And what that's going to do is that's going to apply the configuration to the APIC. Now, the APIC is going to boot up, and then it's ultimately going to give me a login screen. Now, if I type admin and type the password that I entered, nxos12345, and hit enter, it's not going to let me connect. It's going to say incorrect login. And students almost immediately freak out, thinking that they've actually gave it a password that they don't remember, or they fat-fingered their password. Well, that's not the case here. 
the case is is that what's happening is we're actually loading services up in the background and that process is actually going to take some time it could take upwards to three or four minutes so what I'm going to do right now is I'm gonna wait and I'll fast forward the video to the point where the APIC is accessible okay we can see that the system has allowed us to log in now in my labs I don't like using this console the KVM I just assume connect to it using my desktop so what I'll do from here on out whenever I interact with the ACI what I'm going to do or the APIC excuse me I will use the SSH shell here in my Mac and a lot of times you'll find that as I reload you may end up having an issue here where your known host file is no longer up to date so in other words, it's saying, hey, this guy's certificate failed. So you'll find yourself more often than not having to basically delete or modify this file in some shape, fashion, or form. I go ahead and just delete it. And then what I do is, is it'll allow me to actually be able to connect. And I'll say yes, and then I'll accept a new certificate. And then I'll use NXOS12345 and be able to log in. And now I am confronted with the application-centric infrastructure. Now, before we do anything... I want you to understand that we need to know how to interact with the system both via the GUI, by the graphical user interface, and via the command line. And there are going to be more than one context in the command line. Right now I'm sitting on the APIC. Ultimately, when we bootstrap the fabric and we bring up our switches and we add them such that they can be controlled and managed by the APIC, what we're going to find is, is that we're going to need to know how to navigate through the screen. So there's going to be times that I want to do things on the APIC and there's going to be thing, times that I want to do things on the switches. It's also going to be important for us to understand that even though this may look completely new to us, at the end of the day this is really going to be something that we're very very familiar with because there, actually there's hardly any new protocols that are going to be running in this fabric that we're going to be building. It's not magic. At the end of the day we're going to be running ISIS we're going to be running DHCP, we're going to be running LLDP, we're going to be running MPBGP where we choose to, and we're also going to be running some new protocols. Protocols that we honestly don't really interact with that much. One of those protocols is OpFlex. The other protocol is going to be the Council of Oracles protocol. So they're new. But at the end of the day, there's not really that much that we need to learn that is different from the way that we've done things in the old-fashioned environments or the traditional infrastructure. We just need to know how we're going to fire up this environment. Now, if I come over here and I type show switch, what we're going to see is, is that we have no switches. Now, this means we haven't discovered any switches, i.e. applied them to the APIC. So what this is saying is there's no switches under the apex control but it doesn't say that it that it hasn't found a switch by now i've talked long enough for this application profile infrastructure controller to have discovered at least one of my leaf switches now let's look at how that actually transpires so from this perspective what i want to do is i'm going to say i'm going to say a c i diag now that's going to be the beginning command for a lot of different things that we're going to need to interact with when it comes to command lines. We're going to use the ACI diagnostic output. And what I want to do is I want to be able to look at the output for a fabric vector node, fabric node vector read. I always get it backwards. And this is telling me, hey, um, I have discovered a switch. The fabric node vector, I'm reading the database of what has been discovered. So in this instance, this APIC has found a switch. This switch has this serial number. Now, if I were to take the time, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to open up my terminal server here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to these leaves. So I'm going to say admin. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I want to connect to leaf1. Now, when I log into this leaf, I'm actually physically connected to the 5K, sorry, the 9K, that is servicing or providing the functionality of leaf 1. Now, notice it has no name, no configuration. In fact, there's no password. I'll just say, log in as admin, hit enter, and 
it's just going to let me in. And it says, fabric discovery is in progress. Show commands are not fully functional. Log out and log in after discovery has, uh, has been done to continue to function and to use show commands. Now, I can execute show version. That's going to work. And I want to look at exactly what it is that we're running on this switch. What we're going to see is I'm running version 312M of the code. That's one of the reasons I'm so behind schedule. This is my previous class was written for version 1.2, which aligned with the CC i.e. data center version 2 blueprint and the 2.1 blueprint has moved us to 3.1 and I decided to just go ahead and, and, and teach the new versions because there's a lot of enhanced capability inside of the ACI fabric as it relates to version 3.1. Now there is version 3.2. I did not choose to do that because I think 3.1 is the limit for the current CCIE lab exam for data center so I haven't gone up that high but it will be cool and we may play with it at some point we can see here that we have the configurations what I want to call your attention to is this is a C9318 YCEX and this is the model number of the device that I have now this is a third generation leaf now I have unfortunately actually this is a second generation leaf I actually have a first generation spine so I, there are some things that I can't do in some of the older versions of code. But what I want to call your attention to right here is this number, FDO21430T21. Remember, 0T21, because if we look here, 0T21, that is leaf 1. Now, how did I find that? Let's see if I can do a command here. I'm going to say show LLDP. And what we're going to find is, is I, I don't have that as an output option here. That's link layer discovery protocol. Now, I do want to talk about it, and I do want to illustrate it, and one of the things that you need to know immediately is, is that when you get your APIC, when you get your APIC, and you're looking at your application profile infrastructure controller and all of its settings and all of its configurations, the one thing that you have to understand is, is that you must turn LLDP off of the network card that is part of this system. So as we look at and we look at the configuration here, um, LLDP should not be running on the Converge Network adapter that's part of this switch or part of this server. Now, it won't be by, de by default, but somebody could turn it on. I just want to call your attention to that. I, I ran into a problem with this. And it's really kind of uh, counterintuitive because what we're going to learn in the next video is, is that the APIC relies on link layer discovery protocol to find and to basically detect the entire switch fabric. So with that being said, I'm Terry Vincent, and I'll see you guys in that video. And until then, I'd like to thank you for learning Data Center with me.